Hello space fans, welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. Easily one of Saturn's most beautiful moons, Enceladus is now believed to have an underground ocean deep below its surface, which could possibly mean it's a habitat for microbial life. When Cassini first arrived to Saturn in 2004, Enceladus was not even considered to be a potential habitat for life, but ever since plumes of material were observed ejecting out of its south pole in 2005, scientists have placed a lot of time and effort into this moon to see what's going on. So since that time, scientists at NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Italian Space Agency have been conducting flybys with Cassini to get measurements of how the trajectory changes when it goes by the moon. You see, it's not the mass of the moon that's in question, but it's the distribution of the mass and the density of the matter within it that can tell what's going on underneath the surface. Throughout Cassini's three flybys since 2010, the spacecraft has detected slight variation in its movements due to the fluctuations in gravity on Enceladus. The scientists knew there was a depression in the surface, which would mean less mass and thus less of a gravitational pull for that area. The reading showed matter with a higher density than the surface. Liquid water is about 7% denser than ice and scientists believe that this ocean has a depth of around 10 kilometers underneath its icy shell, which is itself 30 to 40 kilometers thick. So watch out Europa and Titan, there's another moon in town that might prove to be a good habitat for life. How much does the largest known galaxy cluster weigh? Well, astronomers at the University of California at Davis used the Hubble Space Telescope to answer that question. The galaxy cluster with the nickname El Gordo, which means the fat one in Spanish, was weighed in at being 3 million billion times more massive than our sun. Scientists found that it was around 43% more massive than previously thought, which was measured using X-ray studies. However, using Hubble allowed for the team to observe the warping of space-time it causes from its large amount of dark matter, which makes the light from galaxies behind El Gordo to appear stretched and distorted. Astronomers chose to use this method because El Gordo was observed to be in a special moment in galactic evolution, where two galaxy clusters are merging into one. So though typically X-ray observations are fine with measuring galaxy clusters, due to this merger, astronomers thought they might be underestimating the mass. In fact, El Gordo is so large that they weren't able to get a complete view of it with the Hubble Space Telescope, so they'll be continuing their observation to get a very large mosaic image of this behemoth of a galaxy cluster. Now, I hate to end the show on a downer, but I think this story is something that's really worth discussing, especially tonight on Space Fan News Live. NASA has announced that it's suspending its collaborative efforts with Russia, except for the International Space Station, due to the events in Crimea and the Ukraine. The story started with a leaked internal memo which was obtained by The Verge, which says, Given Russia's ongoing violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, until further notice, the U.S. government has determined that all NASA contacts with Russian government representatives are suspended unless the activity has been specifically accepted. This comes as a huge surprise, as only a few weeks ago, Charles Bolden, the administrator of NASA, was quoted saying, Right now, everything is normal in our relationship with the Russians and went further to remind us that the ISS has been occupied for 13 consecutive years in international cooperation and has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. On the 2nd of April, NASA issued a public statement regarding the leaked memo and its workings with the Russians. I'll read it in its entirety so we're all on the same page. Given Russia's ongoing violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, NASA is suspending the major of its ongoing engagements with the Russian Federation. NASA and Roscosmos will, however, continue to work together to maintain safe and continuous operation of the International Space Station. NASA is laser focused on a plan to return human spaceflight launches to American soil and end our reliance on Russia to get into space. This has been a top priority of the Obama administrations for the past five years, and had our plan been fully funded, we would have returned American human spaceflight launches and the jobs they support back to the United States next year. With the reduced level of funding approved by Congress, we're now looking at launching from U.S. soil in 2017. The choice here is between fully funding the plan to bring space launches back to America or continuing to send millions of dollars to the Russians. It's that simple. The Obama administration chooses to invest in America, 
and we are hopeful that Congress will do the same. Many scientists that I've spoken with are not happy with this announcement and feel that politics should not be interfering with international science collaborations, especially on this scale. I've seen and heard of American scientists reaching out to Russian scientists to confirm solidarity under the banner of science, that the pursuit of knowledge and understanding of our universe is far more important than the borders we set up between each other or the leaders that represent us between them. The situation in Crimea should not be trivialized, and I don't intend to do so. The international community has spoken up regarding the annexation of Crimea into Russia from the Ukraine, and many are questioning its legitimacy and its legality. Science does not care about this species' tribal conflicts, and by deteriorating cooperation with one another, we only hinder ourselves. I'm sure there will be a whole lot more news on this topic as time goes on, and we'll keep you in the loop as it happens. That's it for this week, space fans. Join Tony and I tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific as we discuss this week's episode in a YouTube live event. I've included the link in the description. Make sure to bring your comments and questions about any of these stories and we'll try our best to answer them all live on air. If you haven't already, please subscribe and if you like this video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. Thank you all for watching and as always, keep looking up.